Hey you, I'm so glad you're here today and I have a new podcast. I just want to give an update that it's been so slow for me to edit those, but um, a lot of life happening, especially with my son, a lot of procedures, doctor's appointment. He's fine, but it's just the normal issues that he has and we have to take care of. But it's not news that I'm the one doing this solely and um, sometimes people don't imagine the work it does to produce a podcast and the time that it takes. But I'm so excited for the interviews that I have ahead and I will try my best to um, make this releases faster. Um, I've been involved in um, boot camp, which is um, design class more advanced was boot camp too with Julie Fenfe Balza, which I have a recording with her that is going to come to the podcast soon. And I've been quite busy with that and, you know, trying to grow my art skills and trying to be a mom and trying to take care of a house and all those things. Um, my son is getting ready to have finally uh, therapy at home. So it's been a lot of meetings and um, questionnaires to fill and interviews and things like that. There's a whole process to get things started, but finally we're getting started. Uh, and that takes time. And but I hope you're enjoying so far the great episodes that we are having here in the podcast. And I'm so um, in awe with all the people that I've been talking and it's so great. I want to also remind you that if you want to just support this podcast and I have a Patreon where you can uh, participate and I just added to the Patreon a Slack community so we can talk about these episodes and share things and I think it will be fun. Um, plus you get exclusive videos and the videos of the podcast and much more. Just check our Patreon on the link. So today we have Stacey Natal, and she's a photographer, artist, educated mindset coach based in New York City. She believes the foundation to everything in life is mindset. Her courses and programs are all centered around mindset, mindfulness, and creativity. She helps female creative entrepreneurs get out of their own way so they can design a life and business they love. Um, I wanted to bring Stacey a long time. I uh, met her content on uh, Clubhouse, and she talks a lot about journaling. And I'll post a journaling freebie that she has with prompts. She also talks about, as I just said, mindset and vision boards. Um, again, the power of journaling. It was such a great conversation. And um, I hope you check her website and her freebies with some prompts for you. And I think that's all. So thank you so much for being here and listening to the podcast. I so appreciate that you all are enjoying and again if you um, would be so kind to leave a comment on apple podcast it makes a difference for people to find or just give five stars it's so easy to go on the apple podcast app and just click five stars you don't even even to write anything but if you write i would like to uh, read here and i appreciate it once again let's talk with stacy natal Welcome to the Artistically You podcast, where mixed media art is a place for all. Here, we are going to talk about art as a mindful practice, connect with our creativity, and embrace curiosity. This is your host, mixed media artist, Jana Oliveira. Hey, Stacy! Thanks so much for being in the podcast. So nice to have you here. Oh, hey, Jenna. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate being here with you. I appreciate it. So tell people where are you uh, talking to me from? Because it's a place that I love. <laughs> I'm talking to you from New York City. I'm in my office area. I have this up so that you can't see the rest of my living room but my office <laughs> area is in like the side of my living room um yep so i'm coming to you from new york <laughs> yeah and what part of new york are you 
I'm in Riverdale, which is like the west side of the Bronx. So mm. it's right over, it's like minutes away from the west side of Manhattan, like along the Hudson River. Mm -hmm. So I lived in um, central New Jersey for many years, many, many years. And oh. I basically was in New York all the time. I mean, our, <laughs> we would go more to New York, you know, weekends or events than to <laughs> stay in New Jersey. I love, love my son. He was, you know, younger at that time and he loved the Central Park. We went there That's all fun. the time with him. He had a blast there. Um, yeah, he loved New York a lot also. So, but we went to the, we, we like to go to the areas that tourists don't go. I don't. <laughs> right. I know right. it's fun. If you don't know New York, you're listening to this. So it's okay. We understand. But when you are there all the time, you just want to be out of that part of New right. York. <laughs> exactly. Like Times Square. Trying yeah, to avoid no, 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 no. Yeah. But we so, have something in common because you're in Florida, right? So yes, I lived now. in Florida for a while too. I lived in Orlando. Yes. Oh, yes. Orlando. I'm two hours from Orlando. Yeah. I'm oh, in Palm okay. Beach. <laughs> yeah. I remember that now that you're saying that. We're yes. going to talk because I found you on Clubhouse and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Okay. So I found you on Clubhouse and love everything that you were speaking there. But and for people that don't know Stacy, she also is a great person if you want to learn about journaling, how to journal, how to visualize goals, uh, visual uh, visualization boards and all that kind of thing. We're going to deep dive on that. Yeah. But first, I wanted to talk a little bit about your art because you are a photographer. I'm going to say her handle on Instagram is Stacy. Uh, you say NATO? Natal. Natal. Okay, yeah. It's like my language, but I was like, not sure. <laughs> right. Um, my yeah, my so, uh, father was Puerto Rican, so... Ah, that's why. I was like, this is yes. so similar to Portuguese. That's why. <laughs> um, so, but I'll, of course, I'll put all the notes for you if you are just listening to this on the podcast. But she is a photographer and she does amazing, amazing pictures. So tell us a oh, little bit yeah. how that is started for you. How long are you doing photography? So I've been doing photography professionally like over 10 years already. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it for a long time, but mm -hmm. it's definitely has changed throughout the years. So mm -hmm. I started when my girls were very young. So my interest was photographing young kids. So mm -hmm. I started by doing um, portrait sessions for kids and families. Really? Yes. It's so different. <laughs> I know it's so different from what I do now, mm -hmm. uh, but I really still love photographing people and really mm -hmm. um, like candid. It's not really as much posed. Mm -hmm. And then that changed into more personal events like bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs. Mm -hmm. And then I was more interested in the business side of things like the entrepreneurial world. So mm -hmm. I wanted to photograph entrepreneurs. So I did that. Mm -hmm. um, I changed to that. So I was doing personal brand and event photography for entrepreneurs like for the so websites and things like that website. or social media yes. no more website. more professional shoots sometimes yes do website that. social media and then also their events so a lot of oh, entrepreneurs yes. hold workshops and mm -hmm. big live events so remember back when live events were happening <laughs> yeah <laughs> right like two years ago so i was doing a lot of events um because i just was really interested in that business side of things so when I was photographing events like I'd learn a lot from the speakers because I figured mm -hmm. when I was doing the bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs it was a lot of time like six hours so I figured mm -hmm. if I'm going to spend that much time you know at an event I want to learn I want to you know be around people that inspire me I mean the mm -hmm. bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs were nice for a time but I was more interested in so I made that transition to entrepreneurs and then with the pandemic like there were no events or anything and it was like actually good timing for me because i was mm -hmm. losing interest in that as well that area you know, mm -hmm. because, it's, because it's very taxing on your body like to be having to stand up for six hours it's just a lot yeah so but before then i was also photographing florals and nature and i had a solo gallery show with that and then that just became more of my interest. So it was more of my interest to focus on the art side of photography rather than like the photo shoots with, you know, like uh, for entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And then you started to have this thing for flowers. 
Is that yeah, how it so, started? <laughs> so basically that started because as my girls got older, they didn't want me to photograph them anymore. Okay. So I was like, I need a new subject, something that's not going to fight with me. So um, I like to be in nature anyway. And mm -hmm. it, it, believe it or not, in New York, there are like a lot of nice gardens. There so is. I thought like, I've always loved the color and the textures. So I was photo always photographing that, but I became more serious about it, mm -hmm. I'd say in the past year or so. Yeah, you do amazing um, work. You do a lot of oh, also kind of like micro shots, right? Macro, yeah, I like to get really, so my style is similar to my portrait work. So when I photograph people, I like to be really up close with them. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with flowers. I like to get really up close, but I like to give my work more like a painterly aesthetic. So in Photoshop, I'll add textures, I change colors. So like what you see isn't necessarily what I shot mm -hmm. originally, but I change it to- Yeah, you, you know, give like, an like, artistic flair to yeah. the shots. Um, isn't it? So I would recommend you uh, to check her Instagram to kind of uh, understand. I understand because I was a Photoshop teacher, so I understand. But okay. so it's, you know, it's it's more than just a filter. So it's not when you say that it's not a filter, it's more than that. It's it's right. some of the pictures, I think they become very um, almost like glowy and very like mystic. <laughs> And oh, yeah, that's yeah. what I want. <laughs> yeah, what I, I didn't want like a straight, you know, right, oh, this right. is a photo snapshot. Anyone could do that. I wanted there to yeah. be a little bit of mystery Some, and yeah. something is special. Yeah, so um, it's very unique. So if you're thinking, well, oh, no, it's very unique. And oh, you also you. you sell the prints of your photographs, right? Yes. So originally, I was trying out Etsy because I was using Etsy for like years ago i was making headbands like when my yeah. daughters were younger so i was making hair accessories mm -hmm. so then i thought i'll try to do it um sell my prints there but it really i, I didn't feel like that was the right uh, venue or space for me for that kind of work so i'm creating i'm in the middle of doing a separate shopify site for my mm. art so with fine art prints and canvas prints will be available oh that's nice that's nice so i'll be in the lookout so i can uh, link that and uh, okay also. great thank you yeah so as i was saying i met you for clubhouse and um you know if you are and listening to this, they have no idea what Clubhouse is. <laughs> because, you know, uh, podcasts, we don't know, right? When the person is going to hear this, it can be now, it can be, I don't know, in five years. <laughs> but uh, Clubhouse is a part of a platform that is audio only. So people can open a room, they call a room, and you can have a topic. And then people are there listening. Sometimes people can ask questions if they say, you know, if you want to have questions. So people, you know, mostly is with their phones. And so people go and ask questions and we have discussions. And I have to say, I discovered some pretty amazing people at Clubhouse and I learned so much. I in the beginning, I have to confess, I was a little addicted to it, but then I was like, this is taking too much of my time. I know, um, I know. I that and too. now I go here and there. Sometimes also it was hard for me when I was living in Washington because of the time difference. Most when oh, people okay. would schedule things, which here is kind of like 9 a.m. or 10 a.m., it would right. be too early for me and I have to get my son ready to school. So it was never like I would miss so many things. Um, mm -hmm. so it's a platform that people have discussions about all kinds of topics. And one day I was there and I saw this topic about journaling and visualization. And sometimes you do, you did just about journaling, journaling right. prompts, and I love it. So I entered the room oh, and I was you. just amazed because, you know, I've been doing art journaling for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, but I have this thing with journaling that I keep wanting to journal more, but I journal and then I feel good about it and then I forget a little bit. I have this difficulty to keep that consistency, but really? I believe, I believe so much in journaling. And, and I know I'm extending myself so much, but 
I, w I wanted to tell you something about it. Before we came here, I always dreamed to go back to Florida. And okay. when I decided, I heard some of your podcasts, not podcasts, Clubhouse, <laughs> about visualization. I started to kind of like, as I was feeling... I was feeling depressed. My anxiety was getting worse there. It was not working for us and it was not working definitely for me. Mm -hmm. And I was getting tired of cold because, you know, I lived in New Jersey. I lived in many places that were cold, Oklahoma and right. Seattle was cold. And I was like, I'm living 16 years in the cold. I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> and I was listening to you talk about this visualization and journaling them. You know what I did? I open here my journal and I start to visualize and write that I wanted to go back to Florida. Oh, and that's so I went to Zillow and I printed a random house there for sale. And I started to think about that and to write about that and make it. And I'm here. That's so great. I love to hear that. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. It works. So it definitely works. I believe so much in journaling and I wanted for so long to invite you and I'm so glad that you accepted because yes, we are artists. In my case, I paint and people that are listening, they just like to have their, you know, or they are artists or they are people that are collectors and like to have their mm -hmm. art in their homes. If it's a photograph, if it's a painting, but I believe that painting, this is my whole core of, you know, me as an artist. I believe that a painting is not just a painting. A photograph is not a photograph. Art is not just art. I can look at a painting and see so many things that I could draw about that painting. Mm -hmm. Right? What memory brings to me. Right. What that color brings to me. You know, and I'm, I didn't go further on this topic yet on my blog or something like that. But it's something that I believe. And even if you're listening to this, you are not an artist or... I just wanted today to talk about, about what is journaling, how that can benefit you. Because I think if you start a little bit every day, uh, and we're going to talk about your courses also, um, I think it's so helpful. This is a topic that I uh, is so close to me, and I love it so much. I can't stop reading about it or learning more about oh, it. Oh, I know. So tell us a little bit about this work that you do, and tell a little bit to people what journaling you know is and how it can help them. Sure. I love journaling. So journaling is one of my favorite mindset tools that I use. And um, I know what you say, like a lot of people do that, like they start something and then when it works, they tend to stop doing it, right? And it's something like they just go back to as they need yep. it. But if you create it, if you make it like a habit, then it really has so many benefits because you never know like what's going to happen down the road. So journaling has so many benefits. You can use it as just like a brain dump, get everything out of your head. You can use it with specific prompts. You can use it almost like self-coaching. You can also use it um, like for your goals. So you mentioned that you started journaling about your... Um, My house. Your, mm -hmm. your move to Florida. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but then... Uh, so I use that also similar. So when I... I use journaling and a vision board to get me out of Florida and back to New York. And then I also use it for like the first gallery show that I was in. Mm. Um, I wrote about it. I visualized and I just knew I wanted to be, have my work in the gallery show. I knew every detail, like down to what I was going to wear. And then sure enough, it happened. I got wow. into my first gallery show. And when I was getting ready for that, the first gallery show that night it was maybe like a couple hours before we were leaving to go into the city it was in soho and something didn't feel right i was like what's wrong and i looked at my outfit i'm like this isn't what i'm supposed to be wearing i'm supposed to be like in my vision i'm wearing a sleeveless black dress and i didn't have that on i'm like i don't even have that so i like dashed out to the store like that was near me, like a Marshalls or something. And I found mm -hmm. a black sleeveless Calvin Klein dress in my size. Oh and I was God. like, now it's complete. Now it's exactly complete. And so it really came to life. And I feel like journaling, there's so many different ways you can use journaling. So like I mentioned, goals, mindset. So it is my favorite tool for my mindset as well. Mm -hmm. So if people are not familiar with journaling, um, is it easier to start with prompts? 
So that's really up to you. So I suggest like people that are just getting started, there are two ways. You can either start with a prompt and mm -hmm. that might be easier because I know it could be intimidating to just open up a blank page and you're like, I don't know what to write. Yeah. But that's literally how I started. I opened a page and I wrote, I don't know what to write. This is silly. What am I going, what am I supposed to say? And then eventually I just wrote about like, what am I going to make for dinner? And just like my thoughts just started to unfold. One thought led to another. And that's called a brain dump where you just, mm -hmm. that's like more stream of just consciousness mm -hmm. writing. And if you've ever read the book, The Artist's Way, which maybe yep. your audience I is read. familiar with that. Mm -hmm. So she calls that morning pages where it's just like stream of consciousness. Yeah, so I call that brain dump. Just get it out of your head. Mm -hmm. But you can also have prompts or you can do specific things. Like I do an exercise which is in conjunction with my vision board called acting as if. So I write about something like one of my goals as if it had already happened. And in my course, I have like so many different ways that you can use journaling. So, but yeah, I love it. I think, so if you are a beginner, if you are intimidated by a blank page, you can get, you can start with prompts and I have some free prompts as well. Yeah, that is what I was going to say. So if you go to stacynatal.com and, um, she has a freebie there is some prompts that you can get it started i actually had a freebie and um, i think it's a great way there is also this uh nowadays you know journaling came a long way don't you think because before people would not talk much about it and now right. there is all these kinds of books for five minutes a day journaling right. or like you know just a line a day kind of journaling and right. um, that never worked with me because I felt very, sometimes I would like to write more and I felt very constricted about it. I do like prompts because sometimes prompts make us think about things we don't think very often. Right. And um, it, it kind of gets you warmed up. Sometimes you mm -hmm. start with a prompt and you can just start journaling right, you just go on your own tangent after that i was gonna say and it doesn't have to be fancy like i don't even no. I, i'm gonna show you i use composition books you know like yeah. what your kids go to school that's what i use as my journal like i have fancy like a dollar yeah as well but i i know i don't have it here but i do that's for the most part i use mm -hmm. composition books because it's easy it's accessible you know it's not expensive you can get it wherever you want and you can write as much or as little as you want. So yeah. it doesn't have to be hard. When the uh, pandemic started, you know, that thick of the pandemic that we were not sure what's going on, it was scary, what's going on? Um, we just start seeing people dying. And um, I started one that had also a little booklet that had, because at the time, the New York Times started to do a timeline, what everything that was happening. Mm -hmm. To the point that I stopped the booklet because it's like, <laughs> we're still here. The booklet will be like, whatever. But at that time, I started to schedule pretty regularly. But I did more, I, I think from my days of a scrapbooker, I did more kind of like what I did today and what happened mm -hmm. this week. And, you know, uh, sometimes about things in the news and things like that. Just more as a journaling as slash documentation. Right. So I love that. Um, and as you said, I think people should not be afraid. Like, I don't need a fancy thing. Do you think it's important to have the same time routine or whatever works for the person? I say whatever works for you. For me personally, I like to do it first thing in the morning because mm -hmm. I'm not um, influenced by anything like social media or, you know, people mm, wanting point. things from me. So it's my alone time. It's like a clean slate. Mm -hmm. I know some people really love to journal at night, right before they go to bed, kind of like a reflecting on the day. Yes. But I always carry like a smaller journal with me in my bag. So let's say I have a doctor's appointment, oh. I'm sitting in the waiting room. Then I, you journal? Time, I journal. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I always carry one with me. So but normally I do it in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then if I'm out, I just have it with me because in case thoughts or ideas come up, I, I like to have that with me as well. And what do you think the benefits that journaling bring to us? 
I think um, it helps you work on your mindset. So you'll start to notice patterns like, why mm. am I writing about the same thing over and over again? Or right. I'm complaining about the same thing over and over again, but I'm not taking any action on it. So you'll yeah. uncover patterns. Um, like I said, you can work on your goals and visualizing and even write out like your action steps, but also for your mindset. Mindset is really paying attention to the words you say, the thoughts you feel, and the feelings that you have. Mm -hmm. So when you are aware of that, then you can start to make changes like, oh, why do I feel crappy today? Like as you're writing that, and then you can kind of work backwards. Like, okay, I was thinking about this or this happened. So it really helps with your mindset. And I think mindset is the foundation to everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting because I've, I know journaling can help you to relax as well. And I always saw at that point, but it's interesting when you say that to recognize the patterns and to recognize, in my case, I think it helps to, for me to get this negative thinking sometimes that I have right. because of my anxiety. And um, something interesting that I was talking just before our meeting, I had a, a, a my therapy session and we were talking about some things that are going on you know, with my son and his school that was leaving me a little upset. Mm -hmm. And I was being very negative saying, oh, it, I'm going to try this at the school, but it's not going to work or it's going to take two years. And she said, well, if you keep saying like that, it's probably exactly. going to happen. Exactly. But if you think, no, I'm going to get this docs ready, I'm going to apply and he's going to get in three months or he's going to get there, he's going to be accepted. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's um, uh, a special needs uh, private school here. And mm -hmm. so it was so right, right? Because we, and I told her, yeah, if I keep saying that, it's going to attract that. I don't want it to attract right. that. It's really good that you mentioned the therapist. So having a coach or a therapist is someone that really listens. So you might not even yeah. be aware of what you were saying, but someone like a coach or a therapist can like reflect 100%. back to you and say, did you realize you're saying this? And if you continue to say this, this is what's going to happen. So mm -hmm. that's really good that you had your therapist to speak to. And then he or she, whoever, um, was able to point that out to you. Because now oh. you're aware. And you're like, oh, yeah, I was saying Absolutely. That. Absolutely. And I, you know, as a person that did psychology, I believe 100% that everybody should talk to a therapist. Mm -hmm. Even when you think you don't need, you do need. Because we all need right. somebody neutral to talk to. Exactly. It, it doesn't need to be just psychologists, but as you said, a coach or a social worker. I love social workers. I mm -hmm. also did therapy with social worker in the time that my son got diagnosed. And I would not be here if it was not for that social worker. So That's it's great. really powerful. And all of them, actually, they advise you to journal. They advise you to, yes. to do that work. <laughs> yeah. And something that you talk a lot about, and again, we you have this course we're going to talk about, and it's something that I'm so interested in, but I feel that I don't know if I'm doing correct or how it should be done, which is vision board. So tell us a, a little bit to people that are, never heard about this topic. What is a vision board? So a vision board, like my definition or interpretation, the way I use it and the way I teach it in my course mm -hmm. is more like a visual representation of goals. Uh -huh. So there's also like a mood board, an inspiration board, a dream board, but the way I'm teaching it is more For goal goals. oriented. Yeah, more goal oriented. So, um, but the thing is a lot of people go right to the, so when you have a vision board, I could show you mine. When you have a vision board, like, this is one that I have. I have some images on here and I have like different sides to it. I don't know. Other side. There we go. Yeah, Let yeah. me put you on full screen. So you're gonna, um, gonna show better. So yeah, I have different there sides to my vision board. Um, so this side and then this side is more like, I'd say more inspirational because oh, it's just quotes. This and... one is interesting that it folds and you have yeah, so I created one because for me, I don't like a lot of clutter. So mm -hmm. I had this long board and I folded it in half. So that gave me four separate sections. So um, 
Yeah, so the way I teach it is it's a visual representation of your goals, but what a lot of people do is they go straight to the pictures without thinking about what it is that they desire. So the way I teach it is we do a clearing. We do like um, some mental and emotional clearing and physical like clutter clearing. Mm -hmm. And then we discuss like what it is that we actually desire. So we're creating a roadmap for your vision board and for your goals. So you have to like how you created that vision of you moving back to Florida or moving to Florida. So it's like that you had that vision. So we use journaling, we use visualization, you know, we use all that, but you, it, you have to be clear. Like you were clear on what you wanted. You wanted right. to be in Florida. So the whole key is getting clear. And then once you're clear on what it is, like how you want to feel, what do you want to do, how you want to be, um, what do you want to have? Then you go look for those images that represent what it is. And when you do a vision board, it should be really exciting. It shouldn't be like, oh my God, how am I going to ever get this done? Or intimidating or you know, overwhelming. Mm -hmm. It should be like, oh, I love looking at my vision board. I'm working on this. I'm working on this. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of people say like my vision, I have a vision board, but it doesn't work, but you need to work your vision board in order for it to work. Like you can't just create a vision board and like you, you have to take some kind of action, like how you went yeah. on Zillow and you were looking at homes. Like, and that's what I also teach, like creating an action plan afterwards, after you have your vision board and after you are clear on what you desire, you need to take the action. You mm -hmm. need to take those steps to actually make those things happen. But just to, to tell people that we're not seeing, just listening, you showed a piece of board paper and white, and you have pictures of what your goals are related to what your goals are. And from yeah. magazines or your own pictures or things like that. So that's kind of the basics of it. Um, but yeah, it for sure it has to be with intention. But one thing that I'm not clear, and I, I heard different um opinions about that do the vision board it needs to be always out for us to be looking at it because i heard people say oh you can create a vision board on your journaling on your journal or you know what do you think so for me that's two separate things mm. you know some people do art journaling and maybe they want to put it in their journal but for me like I, like i showed my board i'm in my office area and i have a laptop and i have a bigger monitor for um for doing all my editing. So I never use the laptop monitor. So I just hang it over my laptop monitor. And I feel like, and I think there's like scientific proof that you're when you see something like that, you're priming your brain to say, this is what's important to me. This is what I wanna focus on. So help me make it happen. You know, like whatever it is, the universe or however, whatever you believe in. So it's like priming your brain. And it's a reminder, like you're a parent, I'm a parent, you know, everyone is, has busy lives. Like it sounds crazy, but you can maybe forget what your goals are, but this is a, it serves as a reminder. And it also serves as to prime your brain to say, this is what is important. This is what I'm going to focus on. So I do believe that you should put it in a place that you can look at it daily. Like you don't have to be obsessed and crazy, like staring at it all day, mm -hmm. but like it's usually in my peripheral vision or I stare at it a little bit and then maybe I'll journal about something that's on it. But seeing it every day is a great reminder and it's reinforcing what's important to me. Reinforcing the brain as well. Right. Yeah. Um, I did one one time. That's why I don't know if I was uh, doing wrong. I did one one time that was on Canva and then I printed it. Okay. Is that what the fine. same or you have to actually do with your hands and cut and um, something well, like that? I'm a maker, so I like to do things with my hands. So mm -hmm. I think there's more of a connection with the physical boards. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So you can like look for images. There are like plenty of websites online that have royalty free images. But I like the actual like look because I also love magazines. So for me, that's mm -hmm. like a whole pleasurable creative experience yeah. is looking through the magazines and cutting it. And I do feel just like with journaling, some people say like, can I just type it out on the computer? And I'm always like, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Like, I think there's a, something like more magical that happens when you put physical pen to paper in your yeah, journal, so. just like with the vision board also. But if you want to have a digital board, what you can do is create your board and take a picture of it. And then mm -hmm. it could be like the background of your phone or you oh, know, yeah, that's but a good idea. just so that you can look at it daily. I think 
if you want to do it in can like there's really no rule but i think for me personally mm-hmm. that the physical action of it is better for me but mm-hmm. if you want to try can- like something is better than nothing yeah and <laughs> and there is this um there is this research that say also for example about um uh to do lists or goals right when you are not they say that if you are just if you are it helps if you write them to get yeah. it done then to just like i for example use for the podcast organization and everything i use ClickUp. Okay. but i like as well to write some things mm-hmm. um and not just use a program of to-do lists and things like that. So I'm right. kind of trying to use both in a way oh. interconnected because right. I think it's it gets on your brain that, you know, you mm-hmm. want to do that. It's, it's a goal that you want to have. So um, and another topic that you are teaching on Clubhouse and you talk a lot about is uh, manifestation which mm-hmm. I started to be very interested more about. And I mean, I being just basic as I look for podcasts or, or things like that. And um, and I think when we say this word, sometimes people think, oh, this is woo woo. And right. I think people demystify the power that the brain has. Um, right. So talk a little bit about what is manifestation for people that never heard about that. So it's basically like making things happen, really. It's like Mm -hmm. bringing things to life. So this is what I teach in the clubhouse room, which is vision boards, but how to manifest what's on your vision board. So Mm -hmm. we're always manifesting whether, you know, we're conscious of it or not, like things are always happening for us, but it's just being more aware and then being more intentional. So like you manifested your move to Florida, right? Mm -hmm. Because you were visualizing, you took the action necessary. You were more of like excited about it. I feel like when people are like excited about things, then it attracts like like like-minded things like that to happen. And then things can happen really quickly. Mm -hmm. So if things that are on your board or whatever, you feel like it's taking a long time, you really have to do like a gut check. Is this something I really desire is this something i believe that i can have and then i know for me like the more i get myself excited or in a happier state Mm -hmm. then things happen more quickly even something simple like last week i was thinking about a blog post that i wanted to write and Mm -hmm. i wasn't really excited about it even though i thought it was a good idea but i wasn't excited so i was sitting on my couch kind of like blah feeling blah I was like, I've got to change things up because this isn't working. So I put on some fun music. I started dancing in my living room, which I never really do. But like these songs were so upbeat and fun. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, as I was dancing, because I was like having so much fun, boom, another blog post idea came to me. And I just went right to my computer and it came out. It flowed out so easily. So I manifested the idea for a blog post. So it's not Mm -hmm. just manifesting things. But, yeah, um, and that's what I wanted to talk a little bit about because I think when people we say this and people have a little bit of a reaction, a negative reaction, or they backtrack a little bit, is because there is this notion. And and I have to confess, there is many people out there that just sells manifestation to that, to, mm-hmm. as it's just for attracting a car or, you know. Um, but many people think that manifestation is just for that, is to get things. And you said, well, Jana, you said you manifested your house, but this place for me is way more than just things. Mm -hmm. It's about a whole dream of life, but a well-being of life because I was, you know, I was hurting. I was Mm -hmm. in depression. I was feeling like lost. And this place to me, doesn't matter where I lived, in, in terms of housing, right? The fact that we are here as a family, you know, changed a lot of things in our life, mm-hmm. and you know, it's it's more about that. It's not just about the things, right? Right. Talk to us a little bit about this misconception. I think it's a misconception about uh, manifestation. 
about things. So also you mentioned that like people think it's woo woo and I'm very like right brain, left brain. So Mm -hmm. it's very hard for me to think like, you know, I read some books and it says like, picture a light, a white light, like that's a little too out there for me. So I need, (laughs) I need like actual concrete, like, uh, descriptions or proof or, you know, lot. And by the way, there is a lot of research on this. There is proof about this. Journaling also, it's not, we are not here invented, inventing anything. Right. And I need more like the logical side of things. Like mm. the woo woo is really interesting, but I need to be more grounded. Me too. For things. Yeah. So, you know, with manifesting, I realize like when I look back at things and again, we say like you're always manifesting, whether it's like something you want, something you don't want. But when I look at the times that I've manifested things that I really desire, I realize like I was Un- I felt unstoppable. I was excited. Like mm. there were different ways that I was being and that was propelling me to take the action mm-hmm. to help in manifest. And like things start to just line up for you. Mm. And it seems like coincidence. It seems like, you know, synchronicity, whatever. But the more you experience it, the more you see like there, not that there's a formula, but there are similarities to things. Mm-hmm. So I think like, being feeling unstoppable, believing that it's for you, like having a no nonsense, I'm making this happen no matter what, Mm -hmm. like no matter how long it takes, it will happen. And then Mm -hmm. just like how you were saying, like you were feeling a little down. So it's hard to do things and get yourself excited when you're feeling that way. So that's why I always say mindset is the, is the first thing, Mm -hmm. right? Your mindset, like focusing on positives. And then when you get yourself feeling better, then you, you want to take the action that's necessary. Mm-hmm. So I think it's really, um, you know, there there is like people talk about it in a woo-woo type of way, but I like to talk about it more in like a practical. Which and you I can love, even, yeah. Yeah. You can think like, let's say you were at a party, right? And you were feeling down and this was like a happy birthday party. And like, there's a different, you could feel the energy, like it's different. Like you're mm-hmm. not at the same wavelength. If you're going to a party and you're all down and everyone's happy, it makes you feel uncomfortable. It makes the other people feel uncomfortable, mm-hmm. right? Because you could just feel it. Like you can't see it, but you, there's some, something like an energy that you're feeling. So it's kind of the same thing. Like it's kind of like an invisible thing, but if you break it down and be more logical about it, you're like, oh yeah, I, I understand that now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think also manifestation brings something uh, that it forces us to have another kind of mindset in terms of what you're thinking. Because if you have a tendency to be very negative, you think things are not going to happen. Or if you... That's what you're going to manifest. It's not going to happen. <laughs> it forces you to think in another way. Um, right. I heard also that manifestation also can work in... Um, doing lists and thinking about, you know, um, what is her name? I think it's Rachel. You know, she's very famous life coach, Rachel. She says she has a little journal that you have to write 10 things as they are already like, um, I am an accomplished author. I am an accomplished um, artist. I am in a gallery, Right. right? Um, it is affirmations, but it's kind of like she's t- trying to enter a little bit, I think, in manifestation for you to have so that, that mindset. Right. So that's also like the journaling exercise I mentioned, like the acting as if. So if you say, I am a successful artist, you write about that. Like, what does that mean? Like, how are you spending your days? Are you excited because people are buying your art and, right. you know, you have enough time to create new art and so you just write about that. And sometimes though with affirmations like that, it seems like I, it's not believable, right? Like if you say, I am a successful artist, but you don't feel like it or you're not, it's like, there are two ways. You can either keep saying it until you believe it, or you can say, you could tweak it a little bit to say like, I am ready to believe that I could be a, a, a successful artist because that is more believable, mm-hmm. right? So you can tweak your affirmations or you can use it just straightforward, but then also like expand on it. That could be your journaling prompt. Just have an affirmation and then just write all about it. Mm -hmm. And I think also uh, it helps you with confidence. 
because you want to mm-hmm. if you want to manifest this kind of things you are forced to have a more positive thinking about and trust and believe in you is right. an exercise and then also if you don't believe it for yourself find someone else that has already done it and then mm-hmm. you could say like okay they did it like if it's possible for them it's possible for me so mm-hmm. look for evidence a lot of times like when we grew up maybe we didn't have evidence of like people you know doing art professionally so That's we started true. out with other things so like for me i was a my mother told me you'll never make money in art like when i was going to college yeah. you'll never make money in art make sure you mm-hmm. study computers so i did i became a systems analyst a programmer but art was always on the side because i didn't have that evidence growing up that that was actually possible but now with the internet like there's so much evidence of you know people doing great things so mm-hmm. it's a great tool for inspiration as well so how that manifestation can be done is just with the vision boards that they can write as well the journaling can can, can work as a as a manifestation oh definitely so i use both so i use the journal i'm use um a vision board first i get clear mm-hmm. you know like i thought like i say teach in my course you get clear on what it is you desire mm-hmm. then you can create a vision board and i use and everyone's different some people use like um like movie mind movies or affirmations visualization yeah. there are so mm-hmm. many different things that you can use but for me the journaling helps to ignite the visualization. So mm-hmm. when I'm writing that acting as if exercise, I could really feel it and believe it. So that for me, the journaling helps for me to amp up what's mm-hmm. on my vision board. And then I know what action to take because I'm already believing that it's happening. Right. So let's talk now about as we are towards the end here. Uh, amazing how time goes so fast. <laughs> how so the courses that you have and so you offer you have two courses on your website right yes so one is currently going on now it's called visualize to materialize and make it happen so the visualize to materialize part is like the not woo woo but like that's when we create a vision we get really clear on what we desire we create vision boards and make it happen is you know creating an action plan for your goals and all these other things that we can use to amp everything up so that's going on now and um there's a discount code for your listeners if you want it yeah. um, you can put it, it's called make it happen 75 the number 75 so it's 75 dollars off the course and then there's an option also to include coaching with me so if you need accountability if you need me to work through it so the way this course happened was i was doing in-person vision board workshops and goal setting workshops um, before the pandemic. They were like my favorite workshops. And then once the pandemic happened, I was doing it more one-on-one and kind of like group sessions Mm -hmm. online which was great, but I felt like it, we had a limited amount of time. And, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes maybe they felt rushed because there was a big, like a workbook to go through. And then our time was over. So I figured, let me make it more of like a self-paced course so you can go through the exercises when you can, you know, during your schedule. And then I offer, I go live monthly. So with this, we're doing a live round right now. Mm-hmm. So, um, like the content is being dripped so that it's not overwhelming but Mm -hmm. new content is going out today and then next week and then everything will be there because there's already like a bunch of videos there Mm -hmm. as well and then people can join whenever they want and then monthly i'll do live coaching calls and we also have an online community and then i had i started a journaling course like journal your way to a mindset i'm changing it to the journal your way to a mindset makeover because it's not really only about journaling it's about changing your mindset Mindset. and different ways that you can use journaling so Mm -hmm. that one is currently closed because i'm moving platforms so before Um, that it was on my website and now i'm using teachable mm -hmm. which is where my the visualize to materialize courses so i just have to move the journaling course over to teachable and once that happens they'll both be available yeah (laughs) so i can keep you updated on that as well but i love teachable yeah, I used to have yeah. courses there. Um, so on the second one that is closed right now, but you're going to open, it's more yes. about the journaling. Yes. And in the other course, the Visualize to Materialize, there are worksheets and you do, you know, journaling exercises. But the other one it's, is more about like the mindset, whereas the this mindset. one is more about goals. Goals. Focus and on goals. So if right. they go to website, are they open or do you have a waiting list? They will how be that open. works? 
Okay. They will be open. Um, what I'll do a couple of times of year is do like a live launch where we'll the be live like, okay, session, we'll do right? this yeah. together. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it will be available. And that's mm -hmm. the thing with goals and vision boards. I want to like make this like stress this. There's no perfect time. Like you don't have to wait till January 1st or you don't have to wait till the beginning of the that's month true. to start setting your goals and thinking about it and creating your vision boards mm -hmm. and going after what you desire. Like do it now, do it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's important because, you know, this is so common, right? People, now that we are approaching the end of the year, people are like, ah, now I'm going to think about my goals. And by February, everything is down the right. drain. Right. And I think it's because there is this mindset of like, no, I have just to start in January. You know, right. Then. Which is so not true. And you have your room that you do on clubhouse what days of the week you do that so i can so i do here. two rooms on monday mornings so at 8 30 a.m eastern time i do uh journal your way to a life and biz you love that's in mm -hmm. my club the life happens now club and that's just a ha quick half an hour i share a different journaling prompt each week and we do interactive journaling so i set the timer we sit there and journal for, for a minute and then we discuss what came up for us and then a little bit later at 10 a.m. Eastern time, I'm over in the Hey Girl, You Can Club. I love that I club. Do, they have so it. many good it's people. So, so fun. So um, so that is Monday as well. That is Monday as well. Community. Yes, Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And that's for an hour. And I have other co-mods that run that room with me. Mm -hmm. And we talk about, it's called How to Successfully Manifest What's on Your Vision Board. But mm -hmm. it goes into so many different topics, depending yeah. on like, what people ask and ask. Like, the lessons that we've learned throughout the week. So, yeah, that's a really fun room. Okay, I'm going to put on the notes, everyone, so you can be reminded of the day of the week and her clubhouse handle. I heard recently that clubhouse, now you can record the rooms. Are you going to be recording? No, I'm not going to be recording in these two rooms because it gets really personal and yeah. people get really vulnerable. And yeah. I want to create safe spaces where people feel comfortable to share. So I feel like if they think it's going to be recorded and the whole world is going to listen, yeah, it just yeah. doesn't feel right. So for these two particular rooms, I'm not recording. Stacy, I think we talked about everything. Is there something else that you would like to say to people? Um, just start working on your mindset. Like, don't be intimidated with journaling. And again, mindset, mindset might be a buzzword also, but it's really like how you view the world and how you will deal with things. So I just want to say one last thing about mm -hmm. why it's so important to me. So, uh, maybe like five years ago or so, I really got into the area of mindset. I was so fascinated, but more like money mindset. Like what are the money stories that I've been telling myself and, mm. you know, all that. So specific to money, but I was still generally working on mindset. And then three years ago, I was diagnosed with HPV throat mm. cancer, mm. but because I had been working on my mindset for so long that I knew to focus on wellness instead of illness. And mm -hmm. I had like, I feel like I had a different experience than some people because I felt like I'm learning a lot. I like I was researching food and, you know, all these other things. And I really attribute that because I had been working on my mindset, mm -hmm. I didn't spiral. I didn't spiral out of control or into a deep depression or anything. And Which helps the disease, you know. Just yeah, spread. it definitely helps. It definitely helps. And you know, even my doctors always say, like, you're the most calm, easygoing patient I've ever had. So because I, I just expect yeah. different things. Like I expect mm -hmm. like everyone that I've done and talk about manifesting, like all of my doctors have been so nice. All of the nurses, the technicians, like I attract really nice people because I expect that. And mm -hmm. that that's why I'm so well. that's why I'm such a believer in mindset because it really has an effect and you know, it plays a role in every area of your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think we have to believe that we are in this universe for good, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes things happen that is not up to us, but I think the core of our existence is for good. Of course, some right. people get distracted from that path for many, you know, different reasons and backgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, but it is for good. And sometimes I, um, when I get a little concerned too much and, you know, my anxiety picks up, I'm like, I have to trust the universe. 
Right. right. And also, also, that's why I suggest doing the journaling every day as a habit. Like, don't mm-hmm. wait for you to get a diagnosis or, you yeah. know, for something bad to happen. Like, lay that foundation now. That so is that something I have to work on. Yeah, lay it the foundation now so that if something does pop up, you're able to deal with it so much easily, more easily and better than if you weren't working on your mindset. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. just a habit. It becomes habitual. Great. So <laughs> Stacy, so people can find you at stacynatal.com. I'm going to put on yes. the notes. And also I always um, post a blog post. So I'm going to put some of your pictures there and okay, all the you. links and everything but also you're gonna have your listening to this just go to the notes and you're gonna see real quick links there for you i would highly recommend you go to her um, instagram and if you are on clubhouse i'm gonna put her handle there if you're in clubhouse um i would for sure go to the rooms because it's a very nice experience what is nice in clubhouse as well it's to see other people questions Mm-hmm. And to see sometimes right. that you are not the only one struggling with some things. Exactly. I think exactly. in Clubhouse, what is nice is we learn so much from others. Exactly. Right. That's why I encourage everyone in my rooms, raise your hand, join the conversation. Like, it's not mm-hmm. just me talking. Come talk yeah. with me. Yeah. So, yeah. And something that I think Clubhouse did that is good is that I think people are more open to share because, you know, you don't show yourself so you can right. just talk. It's just audio. Yeah. And I think it makes people that are more reserved or afraid, uh, they feel and more you comfortable. you have to get dressed up. <laughs> exactly. And that's that also. <laughs> Stacy, thank you so much. I appreciate you coming here. Um, I was crazy, crazy to to invite you. Thanks so much for doing this oh. so fast. I appreciate it. Oh, no it. problem, Jen. It was great speaking with you. Thanks for having me. Yes, for sure. <laughs> See you guys next time. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I appreciate you listening to the podcast all the way here to the end. And I would like to thank you so much and to help us spread the word about the podcast. You can share on Instagram and tag me. I would love to share as well and take a screenshot and tell me what you're doing while you're listening to the podcast or leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. We really appreciate if you could do that. It really helps spread the word about the podcast. I will talk to you on the next episode.